The Magic School Bus Explores the Senses by Joanna Cole and Bruce Stegan. For David Hoshmal, whose friendly wisdom and guidance always make perfect sense. Our class was studying the senses, how people and animals know what's going on around them. We were doing experiments and writing reports. We were even learning a song about the senses to sing at an important parent-teacher meeting. The day before the meeting, we practiced our song 20 times. It would have been easier if we had an ordinary teacher, but we don't. We have Miss Frizzle. Looking at her dress made us forget the tune, her shoes made us forget the words, and her wacky personality made us forget almost everything else. When the school day was over, we went outside to warm up for a game. After a while, Miss Frizzle came out and got in her car. At the same moment, Mr. Wilde, our new assistant principal, called to us. See you at the meeting tonight. Tonight, we groaned. Miss Frizzle thinks it's tomorrow. I have to tell her, said Mr. Wilde. But it was too late. The Frizz was already driving away. I've got to catch up with Miss Frizzle, said Mr. Wilde. To our surprise, he got behind the wheel of our bus. Believe me, believe us, we've had a lot of experience with that bus. We couldn't let Mr. Wilde drive it, not all by himself. After all, he's only an assistant principal. He's not Mr. Frizzle. We all jumped on board. As, Mistle Fr As Miss Frizzle went faster, some papers blew out of her car. They were her teacher's notes about the senses. They came flying in the windows of our bus, and we saved them for her. Mr. Wilde drove carefully out of the parking lot. We were only a few cars behind the Frizz. We would catch up to her in no time. Then Mr. Wilde saw a little green switch on the dashboard. Green means go, he muttered to himself, reaching for the switch. Don't touch it! We warned, but it was too late. Mr. Wilde flipped the switch. He had never been in a school bus like this one before, but we had plenty of times. We knew that something impossible was going to happen, and it did. The bus began to shrink. The bus shrank until it was no bigger than a speck of dust. A stiff breeze started up and blew us into the air. Ahead, we saw a big blue circle. In the middle of the circle was a black dot. It was a giant eye. The eye belonged to a police officer, and we blew right into it. Before the officer could blink us out, Mr. Wilde saw a rainbow-colored lever. Leave the lever alone, we yelled, but he couldn't resist. He pulled the lever, and the bus slid smoothly through the cornea the clear covering that protects the iris and the pupil. Beyond the cornea, we passed through a sea of clear liquid, past the blue iris, and through the pupil. Who knew driving a bus was so much fun? asked Mr. Wilde. Mr. Wilde was going wild! I should have been a school bus driver instead of an assistant principal, he exclaimed, as we slipped through the clear lens of the eye. We weren't the only ones going through. Rays of light went through also. The lens focused the light to make a sharp picture on the retina, a layer of cells on the back of the eye. Let's go to the retina, said Mr. Wilde, gunning the engine. There was no stopping him now. The teacher's notes said the retina is made up of special cells called rods and cones. These cells change the light that falls on them. The pattern of light becomes a pattern of nerve signals going to the brain. It's like translating one language into another, said Tim. The rods and cones translate light language into nerve language. Mr. Wilde had forgotten all about delivering his message to the Frizz. All he cared about was driving the bus. All we cared about was finding Miss Frizzle. Keisha flipped through the teacher's notes, trying to figure out where we were. Here, look, here's a map of the retina, she said. There's a spot in the center of the retina is the fovea. That's the part of the eye we use when we look directly at something. What's the other round spot on the retina, we asked. 
It's called the blind spot, answered Keisha. Everyone is blind in that little spot of the eye. It's where all the nerves in the eye come together. They form a bundle called the optic nerve, which runs from the eye to the brain. A smile spread over Mr. Wilde's face as he steered the bus into the optic nerve. We rolled out onto the surface of the brain. It's called the cerebral cortex. We have to keep track of the frizz, said Ralphie. Look for the part of the cortex that gets messages from the eyes. Everyone scrambled off the bus and spread out. Wanda called from the back of the brain. Here it is! We ran to join Wanda in the vision center of the brain. Somehow, we saw what Officer Jones saw. There was Miss Frizzle in a dress shop, buying a dress with optical illusions on it. We called for help, but of course she couldn't hear us. She didn't know what Mr. Wild, that Mr. Wilde was driving the bus. She didn't know that her class was in a brain. She didn't know that everything was totally out of control, and we couldn't tell her. Then we felt something rumbling. Officer Jones was on his motorcycle, riding away. We had to stay close to the frizz. We jumped on the bus, and Mr. Wilde swerved back onto the path of nerves that led to the eye. Our bus teetered on the edge of the eyelid, then dropped through the eyelashes. When we looked down, we saw an ear. We were falling into the ear of a little kid who was looking in a toy store window. We went straight into his ear canal. Whoosh! We slid all the way down. At the end of the ear canal, we hit a thin, stretchy membrane called the ear drum. We came tumbling out of the bus just as some sound waves entered the ear. They made the ear drum vibrate. They, we vibrated right along, through the ear drum and into the middle ear. So did our bus. There was nothing in the middle ear except air and three ossicles, small bones that carry sound vibrations. Sound waves traveled from one bone to the next. We went too and the bus rolled behind us. Then we came to another stretchy membrane. This one was called the oval window. The last ossicle, the stirrup, was resting right on top of it. Dorothy Ann read from Miss Frizzle's notes, Children, the oval window separates the middle ear from the inner ear. Inner ear, here we come, shouted Wanda as we went through. We were going to the inner ear whether we liked it or not. So far, all the parts of the ear had only one job, to carry vibrations. In the inner ear, we saw the part that receives vibrations, the cochlea. We swam through the liquid inside the cochlea. We saw cells that looked like tiny hairs. Miss Frizzle's notes said, hair cells are sound receptors. They translate sound vibrations into nerve signals. As soon as we were on the bus again, Mr. Wilde followed the nerve signals along the auditory nerve. This time, we went to a different part of the cortex, the hearing center of the ear we were in. As soon as we were standing on it, we could hear someone. We could somehow hear what the little kid heard. It was Miss Frizzle reading from her things to do list. She was nearby. Maybe there was still hope. Maybe the frizz could rescue us. Then we heard heels clicking on the sidewalk. They were Miss Frizzle's heels. She was walking away. We had to follow her, so we ran for the bus. We sped over the brain, into the auditory nerve, through the ear, and out the ear canal. Then we started falling. The time, this time, there was no soft ear to catch us. We saw the hard sidewalk rushing up at us. Then, just before our bus crashed, something amazing happened. A friendly dog, smelling her way on, along Main Street, snuffed us up. At first, we were happy because we were safe. Then the full impact of our situation hit us. We were inside a dog's nose. Dogs get a lot of information just by smell. In the dog's nose, we saw tunnels of bone, all coated with smell receptors. Miss Frizzle's notes said, when the dog breathes, Molecules come in with the air. They stick to the smell cells in the nose. Then the cells send messages to smell areas in the dog's brain. Mr. Wilde drove to one of the smell areas. Then we could smell what the dog smelled. It was easy to tell when we were close to the pizza restaurant. Let's 
let's get out and have some pizza, said Mr. Wilde. For once, we all approved of his plan. He drove out of the brain and back to the nose. Just then, the dogs sneezed and the bus flew out. Through the windows, we saw the frizz sitting at a table. Splash down! We landed right in her water glass. The bus got a good washing. It needed one. Then a waiter accidentally knocked over the glass. We were tossed onto Miss Frizzle's pizza. Mr. Wilde tried to get away, but the pizza had extra cheese. While we were spinning our wheels, the frizz decided to take a bite. We'd been chewed out by teachers before, but this was ridiculous. We had to escape, fast. Mr. Wilde gunned the engine, and the bus lurched out of the cheese and onto Miss Frizzle's tongue. It was covered with bumps. Between the bumps were deep gaps. Looking down into one, we saw the food molecules being washed into the taste buds by saliva. Then a wave of it swept us down, too. We could have hidden out in the gap until Miss Frizzle finished chewing, but that must have seemed too boring for Mr. Wilde. He had school bus fever. He hung a sharp left into one of the taste buds. The taste cells inside the bud were changing the tastes into nerve messages. Before we knew it, we were traveling on a pathway of nerves to a taste area of Miss Frizzle's brain. We climbed off the bus and stood on her taste cortex. Now we could taste what our teacher tasted. We thought we'd love the taste of Miss Frizzle's pizza, but yuck, it was covered with anchovies. We were so, so grossed out that we ran away from the taste area of the brain as fast as we could. Luckily, Mr. Wilde followed us in the bus. We ended up on the part of the brain that gets touch messages from the hand. Once we were standing on it, we could somehow feel what Miss Frizzle felt. When she felt something hot or cold or hard or soft, we did too. Let's see where this nerve goes, said Mr. Wilde. Back on the bus, we zoomed along the nerve pathways leading away from Miss Frizzle's brain. At the end of the nerves were the receptor cells in her skin. Here's our exit, said Mr. Wilde, driving out through a pore in the skin. Up ahead, we saw the frizz petting her mom's nice soft cat. Mr. Wilde drove so fast that the bus flew right off Miss Frizzle's hand and into the cat's inner ear. We passed the snail-shaped cochlea used for hearing. Then we came to some hollow tubes. They are used for balancing. We hung on for dear life as we felt the cat jump. Next, we heard the rumble of a car engine. Seat belts, everyone, yelled Miss Frizzle, and off we went. When the frizz made a sudden swerve, we were catapulted out of the ear. We landed in the road behind Miss Frizzle's car. As the bus grew to its regular size again, Mr. Wilde beeped the horn, and Miss Frizzle pulled over. We told her about the meeting, and in no time we were all on our way back to school. We got there just in time to sing our song and check out the refreshment table. Then, what a surprise, Miss Frizzle got an award. If anyone deserves an award, it's the Frizz. She's the most sensational teacher in the school. That was... The Magic School Bus Explores the Senses by Joanna Cole and Bruce Deegan. And this is EDU Kids Space. Subscribe for more stories, books, and lessons. And if there's something in particular you'd like to learn about, leave us a message in the comments.